Alright, so uh, just first day in Fort Wayne, what is this game? Nice, progressing right now. It's progressing as one would expect a federal case. We just set it for trial. Um, it's going to be going tr going to trial for five days at the end of March, uh, which is an appropriate amount of time, I think, given everybody's schedule. And uh, you said that there could be additional parties added to the case. What do you mean? Could be. Uh, we're looking at adding additional parties to the case aside from Joe Crocker and Dan uh, excuse me, Joe Gutierrez and Daniel Croker. Um, yeah, so we'll leave it at that for the time being. Okay. Not to tell um, my hat too much. Uh, and uh, you said though that this could be further delayed, right? Because uh, your client might That's, be. Uh, yeah, no, but I would have that thing. Yeah, yeah. Had I had I known that you guys were in the courtroom at that point in time, I would have taken different measures. Oh, so okay. I can't. All right, that's fine. I won't go into that. Thank you. Um, and uh, just you know, this case has gotten a lot of attention. What have just the last you know months been like? Oh, uh, for us, it's been business as normal. I know my client's been having some you know recurring issues from the attack. So I think unfortunately to be expected. So he's trying to work through those at the moment. But you know, from our perspective, this is it's a job we do. Right? So it's been business is unfortunately business is well, what do you mean? Like what is human experience? Um, you know, it's you know, I think he's having a hard time adjusting to the idea that he was in uniform and he was attacked by police. I, mean, I think that would shake just about anything, right? Nominally, everyone's on the same team, and they have one side. It is. It's been for throws you for a loop, and it's been it's had some impact. But he's trying to work. Another truck. Trucks today. Um, and uh, you know, have you learned anything else about you know what happened since so, the lawsuit came out? Not yet, but now that we've had this initial conference with the judge, all of our discovery options are now open. So the interrogatories, the questions we ask, the mechanisms we have to get documents, all that is open to us now. And we will be able to get a whole lot more documents from much, many other sources besides just FOIA and the town of Windsor to get some more ideas as to what happened after the incident. Right? We have a really good idea what led up to the incident, right? Because there's what, 30, 45 minutes with the body more camera footage. And audio recordings of what, what led up to and what occurred. So it'll it'll help us shed some light on what occurred afterwards. So, and maybe a little bit about some of the prior incidents we think may be hanging out there with at least one of the defendants. So. Uh, and afterwards, you mean just, you know, how the, the town responded or, you know, one, uh, you know, one, officer, one, uh, one officer was fired? Yeah, things like that. And uh, the judge mentioned, too, you know, that there'll be a settlement conference. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, you know, could this be settled, do you think, or is it going to go to trial? You know, I don't ever want to say settlement is impossible, right? That shuts doors, and that's, that's just not appropriate. Um, I don't know. Right? Certain things need to be put down in legal stone, and precedent needs to be set. And so I think that those types of considerations do, you know, do counsel against an early settlement. But ultimately, that is not up to me. That is not to opposing counsel. Ultimately, that's up to the clients. So it's really going to be up to my client and their clients. Well, what do you hope the precedent is for this case? Um, that it's you know absolutely inappropriate to pepper spray people when they're not presenting any you know, threat to you. That you know use of force can be constrained. That the ideas behind things like the fear are inappropriate, and that. If you take these types of excessive force actions, and then you turn around and, as we, you know, believe the documents show, make material false statements in subsequent police reports to further punish the victim and to cover your own misdeeds, that those things will be severely punished by the community. Even if your own law enforcement mechanisms that normally stop that type of behavior, normally punish, even if they fail, that the community is going to speak out, the community is going to severely sanction those behaviors. So those are the precedents. Generally, I think we. Set. Um, and then there's also, you know, legal precedents, clearly established law to help other people similarly situated get over things like qualified immunity, which are fights that people hold in the defense. So those ideas will all counsel against the settlement um, from a legal perspective. But once again, that's not my decision. Uh, that's not opposing counsel's decision. That's a decision amongst the parties themselves. Okay, anything else? No. Nope. Do you think, I mean, would he want to say anything at all? No.
All right. Well, thank you very much for time. I cool. appreciate it. Appreciate it. Do you mind if I ask you one more question? Yes. Um, I was just going to ask you why you and your client feel that it's important at like this time in history to bring a case like this forward and in, in public. So I don't think it's that it's this point in time in history, right? I understand that the idea behind this 1983 civil rights litigation has started thankfully garnering a whole bunch of attention. Um, but, you know, this would have been an important case to bring whether or not there was national media attention, whether or not there was local media attention, right, to protect everybody's interests. So this case would have gone forward regardless of what the political climate would be. Like. So if, 